Hello, hello everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are all doing well. It's been quite a stormy weekend we had, so I hope you guys are all safe and secure and doing well and having a great beginning to your week. And as you see, I'm in a different location for today's video. So normally I do these lives on Monday at eight o'clock, but as you see, I'm out and about. I love being out and about. It's my favorite thing to do. And there's blue sky, trees, green grass. It's great. So um, I'm not going to be doing an eight o'clock live this evening um, just because, you know, my schedule has been, you know, happily a little different. Um, so I'm doing this now and I just wanted to share a little bit about my thoughts, my reflections on the storm that recently kind of, it caused a lot of problems. Um, people in Tennessee are missing and New York itself got a lot of rain. I am not in Brooklyn, obviously, as you see, but um, you know, it, it was rainy down there yesterday from everything that I hear from the weather and people I've spoken with. So. Um, I've been thinking about storms, hurricanes, tropical storms, and two things I want to share with you today that you can do to avoid having a personal hurricane or a personal tropical storm in your life. And so I'm going to use the metaphor of, you know, like recent events to kind of illustrate this point. So I've been talking a lot about forgiveness lately and then last week I started speaking about anger. Um, anger is definitely the root of a lot of things. You know, it can be the root of depression, it can be the root of jokes, it can be the root of a lot of different things that we don't even realize. So you can check back to last week's uh, video that I, you know, shared about some red flags of anger and check that out. And so when we are angry, it can become like a storm, like a hurricane, right? So if you think about a hurricane, right, there's like a center, there's the eye, which is calm. And then the, the rest of the storm comes like out all over and it, it, it creates like a mess everywhere. And it's like all this swirling and there's lots of wind and, and rain um, and, there's a wreckage that's left behind the storm, right? So this is what happens when we can be angry. Now, it does not mean anger in the sense of like violent eruptions, although obviously it could, but it could be things like um, rejection, right? Um, someone can reject us. It doesn't matter if it's a parent that rejects us, a friend, um, like a business partner, it could be a romantic person, like a husband or wife, right? Um, somewhere, you know, rejection. That can create anger, which could then somehow manifest into depression and it could also manifest into fear. Um, fear of losing someone or losing someone's affection in the future, right? And that could then create some storms and so that fear of loss um, insecurity, that anger, you know, and that rejection can cause insecurities and feelings of not being good enough, uh, the need to be perfect, perfectionism, uh, that can, you know, be another arm of anger, um, disappointment, you know, sometimes we set expectations and, you know, expectations and standards are not the same thing. I think I will make a video. I think I, one time I said I was going to make a video about expectations and standards, but you know, we can have expectations of a person. They don't meet them and you know that it is what it is, right? And uh, that can, you know, also create feelings of anger, feelings of resentment, feelings of like rejection, um, and then causing, you know, that fear to come back and those insecurities to come back. And so as you see, this can become like, these are like four arms that I just spoke about, right? Fear, rejection, insecurities, 
and disappointments, right? These are all things they can start swirling around and they can become cyclical and it, it becomes almost like, well, where is it? Like you could be standing in the center of this, looking around your life going like, oh my gosh, there's all this mess swirling around me. I'm feeling let down by this person. I'm feeling rejected by that place, that situation. And it, it's just creating and, and we're standing in the center of it, looking around and going like, how do I make it stop? How do I end these cycles? How do I make this storm of anger, um, you know, stop circulating, stop um, messing up my life because it will mess up our life. So say for example, say for example, um, you know, you've been angry and you've been angry for years, although you haven't really dealt with it. Um, and that's causing things like insecurity to jump in. So say your friend, a, a close friend, she gets a promotion or he gets a promotion at work, right? And you're like, that's not fair. I've worked hard at my job too. Why don't I ever get promoted, right? So now there's some self-comparison. There's some jealousy. You're angry with your friend's success. You're feeling some sort of type of way about it. Now you're out to dinner with your partner who has nothing at all to do with your friend, right? Has nothing at all to do with your insecurity about how you feel has nothing to do with how jealous you are of your friend's success and you find yourself maybe picking a fight and then start picking your your partner apart and your partner's like where did this person like come at me from like why is this person like you know picking on the color of the shirt that I wore today or whatever it is like it's almost like a self-sabotage right so this person over here had nothing to do with your resentment over here, but you're trying to get a hold and you're trying to feel some sort of value or some sort of something. Um, and it's not making any sense and you may realize it makes no sense or you may not realize even what you're doing, right? So how do we stop this, right? How do we prevent? How do we skip? How do we avoid having hurricanes in our life? How do we skip and avoid this? Um, two things, prayer. Okay. So the, the overarching thing is prayer. You can, one strategy is by prayer and two different ways. Okay. So part one of prayer, you can ask God because there is a verse in the Bible that says that, um, we don't even know our own hearts. We may think we know our own hearts. I'm really, really paraphrasing right now. We may think we know our own hearts, but we don't know our own hearts. We don't always know our own motives, right? But God is able to see deeper in our hearts than we can. Why? Because he's kind of outside of the space that we live in. He's outside of it all. And so as someone who's outside of something, there's a bigger perspective. It's more objective, right? So we can say, God, um, there is a storm, things are going around in my life, I'm repeating cycles, you know, my relationships aren't really good. Um, I've had, you know, short-lived relationships. Sometimes they just end suddenly. The relationships I do have, I don't feel as close to those people as I want to feel. I'm having trouble having intimacy with my daughter, my son, my, my husband, my wife, my coworkers, my best friend, whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I'm being blocked and feeling close to these people, or I'm just like having all these endings, these explosive bad endings in most of my relationships are just like, just ending. So search my heart, okay? The common factor in all of this is me. So this is actually taking responsibility to a you know, point. And a lot of times I'm not saying our anger is not justified. I'm not saying that when someone hurts us, it's, it's not okay to be angry. This, it's, it's okay to be angry. Um, please know that it's okay. And sometimes, you know, there is like reason, like valid reason to be angry, but to stay in that place can create this like out of control, storm in our life that can take over everywhere and just like leave wreckage behind. Um, so that's what we're trying to avoid. So search my heart. I don't know what all's going on in there. Um, and I'm not feeling confident. I'm not feeling worthy. I'm feeling rejected. I'm feeling afraid. Be honest, right? Search my heart and show me what's going on with me. Okay. So that is the first thing that you can ask God for in prayer is just to search your heart 
feel, finds out what's actually really going on in there. Where did this all begin? Why, why am I feeling this way? Just like start asking. And it, we are promised that if we ask, we will get an answer. Okay, it may not always be the answer we want. I know I personally don't always get the answer that I want, but we will get an answer and it will be pointed out. There's never been a time that I've asked something to be pointed out to me about what's going on in my heart. It may not be instant. It may take a day or two. It may take a week. It may even take a month, but at, eventually it will be pointed out and those things that are in our hearts, that jealousy, that fear or whatever those things are, it will be pointed out. So once we know that right then the second thing we can do is we can ask God to help us to heal from that so the second step is okay so now I know that I've got these things going on in my heart now I know that I've got this jealousy in my heart and it's because when I was um, you know in school I was always compared to my older sibling or my younger sibling or you know, why can't you be more like so-and-so, right? And so now I'm jealous and now I've got like this fear and this rejection and all these things going on. So now I, I, I've kind of gotten this pinpoint thing of a lot of where things are rooted in, right? Help me God. So step two, help me God to heal. Now, um, I think a lot of times in Christianity, one of the problems is, is that people think that you just go and you say a prayer and then everything's all better. No. It actually may mean the answer for healing may sometimes it thing it depends on what it is right um, but it may take work it may take healing work it may take um, it may be that you know God leads you to read a book it may be that God leads you to a mentor or a coach or to a therapist okay so whatever that healing is that you need in order to um, heal so that those cycles those arms are those those things that are creating the storm the hurricane that that feeling of rejection that feeling of low self-esteem those feelings of shame um and that anger right um it's always not it's it, it can be complicated because it's being it's all swirling around and so you know once you ask god to show you what steps you need to take he will show you and it will be step by step. You're not going to necessarily see the whole thing all at once, okay? Um, it's, what do I need to do to heal? It may be first you need to do this, then you need to do this, then you need to do this. I know for me, it was like first I was led to this one book and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna actually share that soon um, about a book that was really pivotal to the beginning of my healing journey, but there'll be steps that he leads you through and shows you what you need to do, um, who you need to talk with, who you need to reach out with, um, whatever that is for you. Because our healing journeys are unique, they are personal. Not everyone has the same um, needs for healing. Um, and so it is something that, you know, once you, if you can ask in prayer, um, you know, and it's revealed, then you know what to do step by step. And so what may be for me may not be for you. Something for you may be totally different. So that's why you want to ask. Um, so here are again, two ways to skip um, and avoid having hurricanes. It's really proactive and you can begin your day or you can end your day whenever there is no right or wrong um, time to do it. Um, but prayer first, you know, show me what's going on in my heart. Show me like where these feelings are coming from, what's causing them. Show me really what's going on in my heart. Um, and step two, okay, now that I know what's going on in my heart, what do I need to do? What steps do I need to take to heal, to begin to heal, to begin to release the anger, um, and, not just stuff it and shove it, but like actually process and work through the whole, you know, process, which can take years sometimes, okay? Healing can be, especially after a traumatic event um, or like a very severe heartbreak, right? It can, it, it's gonna take time and patience. So those are two ways that you can skip um, or 
uh, proactively avoid um, creating or continuing to live in hurricane cyclical seasons of anger. Um, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, as always, you feel free to drop in the comments your questions or thoughts. You're also free, feel free to send me a DM. Um, and otherwise, I will chat with you guys all soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.